Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see how can we use Azure Active Directory to protect backend APIs in our API management. And as you can see in this diagram, there are a lot of moving pieces, so we will try to break them apart and make it simple for you. First step, we are going to create a function app and import it in our API management. Then we are going to go to the Azure Active Directory to register two apps. Backend app is going to represent the function app in our API management. Then we are going to register client app, which is going to represent the developer portal of API management. Then we are going to configure OAuth2 authentication for the developer portal in our API management and use that to test our scenario. Then at the end, you are going to see how can we use validate GWT inbound policy to validate the incoming token in the API request. Let's get started by creating a function app and import it in our API management. So let's go back to the portal and let's go ahead and create a new function app. Let's go ahead and create a new one. Let's put it in our dev resource group and let's call it Active Directory APIM. All right, let's choose .NET version 6 and let's host our function app in Australia East region. Let's go quickly to the monitoring tab to disable application insights logging for our function app. And let's go all the way down to create our function app. All right, my function app is now ready for me. So let's go ahead and create a new function. Let's go ahead and create a new one based on HTTP trigger. And let's go ahead and create it. All right, now we are all good. Let's go back to our dev API management and let's go to APIs and import the function app that we have just created. Let's go ahead and browse for the function app. Let's select Active Directory API M. And let's go ahead and select that and add it into our API management. All right, let's go ahead and test the get operation of our function app. Let's send a request and 200 OK, all good. Now, let's get back to our diagram. So far, we have created a function app and imported it into our API management. The second step, we need to register these two apps in our Active Directory. One app for the backend function app and the client app for the developer portal. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's start with the backend app. So let's go ahead to my Azure Active Directory. Let's go to app registrations and let's register a new app. I'm gonna call it backend to make it easy for us to spot it. And let's go ahead and register it. Then let's go to expose an API and let's set an application ID for our app. And let's go ahead and add a new scope. Let's call it function app.default. And let's copy this over into the admin consent display name and description. And let's go ahead and add our scope. All right, this is all we need to do for our backend app. So I'm going to open a new tab to register the client app which is going to represent the developer portal of our API management. So let's go to my Active Directory again and let's go to App Registrations and let's register another app. I'm going to call it Client App and let's go ahead and register it. In the Client App, I need to go ahead and create a new secret. So let's go ahead to Certificates and Secrets and let's create a new Client Secret. I'm going to call it secret and let's go ahead and add it. As I'm here, it's going to be very important to copy the secret value and take it with me because once I browse away from this page, I won't be able to see the secret value anymore. Now let's go to API permissions and let's go ahead and add a permission. 
going for APIs that my organization uses. And let's go back to my backend app and go to the overview tab and copy the client ID of my backend app. And let's search for it in the client app. All right, let's go ahead and select my backend app and let's select my scope that we have defined in my backend app. And let's go ahead and add a permission for this. Now let's go ahead and grant admin consent for the default directory. All right, now we are all good for Azure Active Directory apps. So far, we have created these two apps, backend app and client app. And we have authorized the client app to consume the backend app based on the scope we have defined already before. Now, let's get back to my API management and let's configure OAuth2 authentication for my API management. So let's go to OAuth2 and open ID Connect and let's go ahead and add one for the OAuth2. I'm going to call it Active Directory. And in the client registration URL, you can put the URL or the page where users are going to direct it to manage their accounts. However, if you don't want to allow users to self-manage their accounts, you just put a placeholder for this URL as simple as localhost. Then I need to specify the authorization endpoint URL and token endpoint URL. And I need to get back to the Microsoft documents that will explain what I should provide in these values. So let's scroll down and try to find the authorization URL endpoint. And since you are using OAuth2, so let's go ahead and copy this line. And let's put it in here. As you can see, I need to provide my Azure Active Directory tenant GUID in the URL. And you can get it by going back to any of your registered apps. And let's go ahead and copy the tenant ID of your Active Directory. And let's put it in the authorization endpoint URL. Now, let's stick on the post method of the authorization request method as well. And then coming to the token endpoint URL, again, let's go back to the documents and let's scroll a little bit down and let's go ahead and copy the token endpoint. And let's put it in the token endpoint URL. And same as before, I need to provide my tenant ID Let's copy it from my backend app and let's put it here as well. All right, now I need to specify the default scope and let's go back to my backend and go to expose an API and let's copy the scope that we have defined before. And let's put it over in the default scope value. Now I need to provide the client credentials, client ID and secrets for the client app that we have created. So let's go ahead to the overview tab in my client app and let's copy the client ID from here. And let's put it over in the client ID section. And in the client secret here, let's go to our client app secrets this is the secret value that we need to provide. And if you remember, I told you to copy it aside so you can use it later. If you didn't, feel free to go ahead and create a new client secret and copy the secret value straight into the API management OAuth configuration. Now, as you are filling in this information, you are going to see these two text boxes has been auto-generated for us. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy the authorization code grant flow and put it in the client app authentication. I'm going to add a platform, I'm going to select a web and let's put the URL we have copied from the API management OAuth2 configuration. And let's go ahead and configure it. Now let's get back to my OAuth2 configuration and let's go ahead and create it. All right, we are now good. We have created our OAuth2 server for my API management. Now let's go to APIs and let's go to the Active Directory API M, then go to Settings. 
and let's scroll down and select OAuth2 and let's select my Active Directory OAuth2 server that I have configured in my API management instance. And let's go ahead and save our changes. All right, getting back to our diagram. Now we have configured OAuth2 server in our API management. Next step is to use the developer portal to test this scenario. But before we will be able to use it, we need to go to the developer portal, portal overview first, and let's go ahead and publish our developer portal. It might take a few minutes if this is the first time you are going to publish it. And now my portal has been published. Let's go ahead and open the developer portal so we can test our scenario. All right, let's keep pressing on control button if you are using Windows and go to APIs, Active Directory API M, and let's try this API. As you can hear, there is no OAuth. Let's go ahead and select authorization codes. And let's get rid of this window. And then as we are doing this, you might be able to see that there is an authorization header has been added to our API management request. And as we are going to send this request, the authorization header with the token value being received back from the Active Directory is going to be added to my API request. So let's go ahead and send the request. As you can see here, we need to enable CORS. So let's go back to the developer portal overview and let's enable CORS. And let's go ahead and enable it. And now let's go ahead and publish my developer portal one more time. And let's get back to my developer portal and let's refresh this page. All right, let's go ahead and try it one more time. And again, the authorization code has been selected. Let's scroll down and let's send the request. As you can see here, we are getting 401 unauthorized because we didn't include a subscription key. And this is because I didn't put my API in a product when I firstly created it. So let's go to my Active Directory API M. Let's go to settings and let's put it in starter product. And let's go ahead and save our changes. Now let's go to the portal overview and let's republish the developer portal one more time. Let's go back to my developer portal and let's refresh this page. All right, and let's go ahead and try it one more time. Authorization code has been selected, and as you can see here, a subscription key has been provided for me. And this is the token that we received back from the Active Directory, as you can see it. Now, let's go ahead and send the request. We are getting 200 response code, and the response body we have already created in our function app. All right, that's so far so good. We have created everything we need to create and we have configured them in a way that will allow them to talk to each other smoothly. Now, the only thing we need to provide here is to put a validate GWT token in our API policy. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's firstly get back to the documentation and scroll down to find validate GWT policy and let's copy it over into my APIs, Active Directory API M, and let's go ahead and put this policy in the inbound section. Now, we need to change it a little bit. Again, I need to put my tenant ID in the URL here. So let's go back to my backend app I have registered and let's go ahead and copy the tenant ID. And let's put it here. Now, I need to provide the client ID of the backend app as well. So let's go to the backend app and copy the client ID of my backend app. And let's put it here as well. Now let's go ahead and save our changes. And let's go to the portal overview and let's publish the developer portal one more time. And let's go to this page and refresh it. And let's go ahead and try our API. Let's scroll all the way down and let's 
I need to specify the authorization code first. And let's scroll down. Yep, the token has been already attached to the request. And let's send a request. And as you can see here, we are getting 401 unauthorized. Probably I missed one step. So let's go to the backend apps and let's go to the manifest. And I'm going to change access token accepted version to version 2 because this is what we are using, OAuth 2. And let's go ahead and save my changes. And let's do exactly the same for the client tab. Let's go to the manifest. And let's change access token accepted version to 2. And let's go ahead and save our changes. And I'm going to close this tab and go back and publish my developer portal and open my developer portal again. All right, let's go to APIs, Active Directory API M. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's select authorization code and let's send a request. As you can see here, we are getting 200 response code and the response body that we have already configured in our function app. And going back to our diagram, this is what we have implemented to protect our backend APIs in the API management using Azure Active Directory. And we have used the validate GWT inbound policy in our API management to help us enforce that the incoming requests to our API management coming up with the right or valid token that Active Directory recognizes and validates. And we have used the developer portal to test this scenario. That's all I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.